Hey, Bart Miller here with Cycling Strong. So one event that I'm doing this year, if I get in, which I'll know here in a few days, uh, is going to be called Lodija. So you all know that I'm doing Leadville this year. Then I'm doing Logan to Jackson's, what that's called. It's in Utah area. If you haven't uh, seen that race or that event, go take a look at it, check it out, and uh, you can learn lots more about it. Now, Cameron is a sponsor of that this year with his product called Endurance 360. Now, I've done another video, go check it out, specifically on Endurance 360 and why I use it, why I like it, that kind of stuff. This segment is not about that. This segment's gonna be a little bit about my own selfishness of wanting to do better in Lodija. So I've done Lodija two times uh, to this point. Uh, I felt like I've done really good in Lodija. I'm not gonna complain about my times. But this year, coming off Leadville, I've got about three weeks, Cameron, before I jump right into Lodija. And Cameron has won it several times. A lot of people look to him for information on nutrition. He's got a uh, little uh, blog that he talks about it. He's got all sorts of stuff. Right. So enlighten us a little bit about, now this is an event, just so everybody knows, if you haven't Googled it, it's about 206 miles. It is 206 miles, it's not about. And uh, it has three mountain passes in it. And it's a lot of fun but it's a big day on the bike. I think most people, what do you think most people are shooting for a time on that? Do you, do you have an idea? Uh, uh, less than 10 hours. Yeah, we'd say less than 10 hours. Yep. And I think it closes in about 12 or is it 13? I mean, when it gets dark, I know they close. Yeah, it, when sundown, they start done. breaking down the, the finish yeah. line and you're done. Yeah. But, um, yeah, it's about 12 hours. It depends on when your start time is. Yeah. <clears throat> most are looking for the earliest start time they can possibly get. Right. Yeah, they want to get the early start yeah. time, get done with this. <laughs> Six so, o'clock in the morning. Totally. And it's it's cold. So one thing about Lodija that you're going to learn might be unique to some events, but Leadville's just like this, is the fact that you've got to have different gear to ride this event. Yeah. You've got to have a different, I wouldn't say different nutrition setup, but you kind of got to be aware of some nutrition stuff. And you've got to, you've got to really have a plan on this. Yeah. So one thing that I find different for me is when I'm on my mountain bike, I'm here to tell you, getting in the back of my pockets and doing stuff like that, it just doesn't happen. Because I am so intense on where's the next rock coming or this or that the other, I can't focus on yeah. anything else. It yeah. really affects my writing. Yeah. So last year I went to an all, everything in the bottle and a few things in my back, but not very many. Loadage though and road biking for me is a little different. I, I right. can eat out of the back of my pockets. I don't, yep. I don't struggle with it as much. I don't like the fact sometimes I'm like choking on stuff, you know, and yeah. that's hard to, learn for me maybe. I don't know if it is for everybody else. So walk us through some of the things that you find are musts in Lodija. So this is a survival of Lodija, I guess, a little bit. But um, talk about gear and talk about morning. What should we eat and what should we uh, look for gear? So a couple of days in advance is really when you need to start thinking about your nutrition for Lodija. Okay. Uh, three so days. what you're saying is the rest <laughs> of the year we don't have to worry about it just two days prior, right? Well, at least three days in advance is where you're done thinking about losing a few okay. pounds. Right. You're, you're done thinking about uh, uh, cutting weight. Gotcha. It's it's all about getting in as much food and nutrition as you can get. Right. Three days in advance. So right. starting Wednesday okay. prior to Lodija. Right. You're gonna want to start pounding in the, the the rice, the beans, the. the as much food as you can get a hold of, really, because yeah. you're going to burn so many calories in Lodija, right. you need to be topped off. Right. Uh, two days in advance, that's when we really start focusing on your liquid intake, so making mm -hmm. sure you're nice and well hydrated. Mm -hmm. Now, Lodija morning, it's cold, yeah. so any great hydration that you have, you might have to let it go. Yeah. Uh, and that's okay. That's just the way it goes. Right. In the morning, though, because it's cold, mm -hmm. Lodija is all about efficiency. Right. Being efficient with, with your energy all throughout the day because it's such a long day. Right. A lot of riders that I see every year, year in and year out, I mm -hmm. see riders without enough cold weather clothing covering their, their skin. Right. And the problem with that, it takes a lot of energy for your body to warm your body up. Right. Right. So you're going to want to have jacket on, have your leg warmers on, and then drop it off in Preston right. when it starts to warm up. Typically, we get a nice day, maybe around 70, 75 degrees. That's what we've had in the last four or five years. Right. Uh, so 
let's assume that's going to happen again. Warm up, bundle up in the morning because it's cold. You get out in the west, the western area, and right. it it'll get down to you know 30 degrees, mid 30s. Yeah. yeah, that's cold. You don't want your your body fighting the cold weather, trying to stay warm, shivering. Right. That's not good. Right. That's not efficient. You're going to want to be efficient. Wear warm weather clothing. From there, you're going to want to stay regimented. Mm -hmm. Every 20, 25 minutes, time yourself if you need to. Mm -hmm. I, I do. I typically time myself. Mm -hmm. I'm drinking something or I'm eating something every 20, 25 minutes. Right. And I'm always keeping something burning in my stomach the whole way through the race. Right. I like gels. Mm -hmm. I like real food. Mm -hmm. So think of uh, you know your normal day routine. You eat breakfast in the morning, and then yeah. you eat lunch er, around noontime. Right. Well, you're gonna want lunch around noontime again. Right. And your body's used to that. So eat some real food. I like diced red potatoes with some salt, mm -hmm. and even some butter. Yeah. And it just tastes great. It's it's soft. You don't really have to chew it. You pop it in, you squeeze your cheeks, right. and it goes right down. It's so easy. It's awesome. It's easy to do. It's cheap. You just need some preparation time in the morning, Yeah. and it's great. Awesome. So all of us Idahoans love to hear the, the potatoes on the bike, <laughs> so let's keep that up for sure. So when I do it, uh, like Leadville, um, obviously in the morning to me, it's all about making sure that I have my support crews and everybody else expecting weather no matter what conditions. So when I roll in to whatever stage, if I need something different, I want to have it. The other thing that I find on a big day like Lodija or Leadville is, is that what I think I'm going to want, I don't always want. And that's a hard thing to prepare for, but have some different items that you bring out to that, uh, I guess, your support crew, so that if you're there and you just can't take a gel, that you've got something else you can That's take. Right. And, and you may not find that, but I find that. Like I, I use, like most races, I don't crave a Coke or I don't crave something like that. But all of a sudden, like I'll get in the middle of some of those and go, I want yeah. a Coke and I want it now. Yeah. Like I just want that taste, I want uh, yeah. whatever it is. Or I could really, this flavor was good to me and yeah. then all of a sudden it's horrible. I don't even want to, I mean, I can't take another bite. Yeah. And if you can't take another bite, you will not survive. Yeah. Therefore, you're either trying to bum it off of somebody or you're trying to figure out something else at an aid station. Don't do that to yourself. Make sure you over prepare than to be under prepared. I see people in races all the time that they come out just like Cameron's saying, they're shivering to death and the day just gets worse and they yeah. have nothing. They don't pack a jacket. They don't do anything that could help them yeah. survive. And it's like, I feel bad for them. At the same time, it's like, why didn't you prepare? I mean, they yep. do make shoe warmers, buy some, you know? So. Just think through your event, go to people like Cameron, but make comments below here and ask questions because they forget, Cameron forgets what he doesn't know. Uh, a lot of us newbies though, it's like, golly, you're, you're, it's like gold that he's given us, right? To be able to get through an event like that. But he's, not, he's, not, he's more than willing to give it to us, but he just forgets. Oh yeah, I just, that's just a natural thing that he normally does, if that makes sense. So you need to ask the questions, but what I would say is be overprepared then I would be underprepared. Would you agree with that? Absolutely. So you want to make sure your support crew knows exactly what you want at each at each uh, uh, feed zone. Right. But like you're saying, be a little overprepared. Uh, there's there was one year where I went through all the gels in my pockets. We went through all the gels that we had available uh, through support crew, mm -hmm. and I still wanted sugar. Wow. I wanted more sugar. Yeah. So. I asked my support crew to find somebody. Basically, right. we're we're bumming off right. of someone else, and hopefully, someone would help us right. out. Even though I might <laughs> be a competitor, right? right. Uh, fortunately, someone was nice enough to help out, and and I got the gels that I needed. But you, like you said, sometimes you have these cravings for more of this or less of that or right. something different, and uh, be prepared for it, and yeah. it, it's okay. Yeah. Your support crew wants to be well prepared. Yeah. They're there to help you. They know that and they really want to help you. Yeah. We've just got to make sure and have them even over prepared, which is fine. Yeah. Another thing on that note too that I'll tell you is is that Leadville this is not an issue. Lodija it is an issue. Is your support support uh, can't even say the word. Your support crew may not be there. 
and they may be doing everything they can to get there. But if you don't have a backup plan of somebody else on another team or somebody that's there, just in case, you might get screwed, just so you know, because of traffic. And not, they've done everything they can to help with this. I'm not blaming the organizers or anything. I'm just telling you, reality of the situation is you may not have what you need there because they're not there. If that's the case, once again, over prepare, which means have somebody else in that group that may have something to get you through where you need to be, okay? So I just tell you that because, I mean, one year, that's right where I was at. I mean, I came busting in there, and luckily, they were running. I'm not kidding you, like, our timing could not have been better. And my poor wife was in frantic, like, absolutely like, oh my gosh, I'm so sorry. But she got caught behind some people, and there was just nothing she could do. I mean, so you have to be respectful out there. I find in these big events, people aren't. They, they get real rude as far as, and it's because they want to help their rider out. It's not because they're really trying to be jerks, I don't think. Right. But let's be clear, support crew, if you're watching this too, it's still uncalled for. Get somebody else prepared, have them there just in case, because it makes everybody else's life miserable when that happens. I mean, it's, it's bad enough for the racers and the competitors, yeah. but when the support end of it is a nightmare too, it's a, it's a big deal. So be overly prepared or go to an aid station get what you need to, because Lotus just set up to where there are enough aid stations, you can yeah. stop at the next one and get some stuff. Yeah. Might hurt you a little, but you well, can do that. Well, at times I've had to rely on, on the uh, neutral feed zones as well. That's what I'm saying, yeah, exactly. Uh, I, yeah, even in the category one, two pro yeah. group, you know, not everything goes very smoothly. Right. I had, in 2013, my, uh, I had a teenage uh, sibling that didn't show up, show up to one of the uh, feed zones. Dang it. Apparently the story was they, they were asleep in the car. <laughs> That's a good story, at least they didn't lie. <laughs> so, but that didn't help me out very well. Right. I, I could have used more liquid, I was okay on food, but I needed more liquid. Mm. So I, um, I just worked with some friends in the group for, uh, for the next 40, 50 miles before until the next feed zone, but yeah. it worked out okay in the end, but it's a little uh, nerve-wracking at the time, yeah. and um, that's what you get with teenage support crews. There you go. Well, the other thing that Cameron points out that I think is really cool about our sport is, is that we all should be helping each other to get where we need to get. I don't, I mean, I always want to beat a competitor at their best, not at, okay, I, I, yeah. I'm not going to give them a gel, even though I have an extra gel, because we're competing in this race. That's just my own personality. Other people might see it differently. But I feel like, you know what, that will come around in another event somewhere. I might have a flat or not have something. Yeah. That, it just happens in bike racing. You always want to beat a competitor at their best, not because you were able to not give them a gel or help them in a situation, because yeah. it's going to come around. I mean, if you do enough events, trust me, you're yeah. going to get a flat, you're going to have something that's going to go wrong, and you're going to have somebody that's going to save yeah. your bacon if you've saved somebody else's. If not, everybody's going to say, sorry, dude, you've done this to us before, we're, we're, you're out, we're, yeah. we're, you know, screw it. So I think that's a good thing about our sport. I love that about cycling and, and the community. So. I don't think there's really anything else about Lodija, but I just want to do a quick video because Cameron was here. He knows lots about it. If you have questions or you're doing a big event like that, make sure you uh, post those below. Make sure you understand those type of events. Make sure you understand the gear, understand your nutrition, understand a training program to get you ready. I can't tell you, and Cameron will tell you the same thing. How many times have you showed up in a, at Lodija and seen people that you just absolutely can look at and say, they're never going to make the finish? Why did they even show up? But yet they do. Some sometimes of them. they do, and sometimes, sometimes they don't. But yeah. uh, it it's deceiving. Sometimes it's it looks deceiving. like they they are great athletes, and right. it turns out that they just something didn't work out for them. Yeah. Maybe their training wasn't there. Yeah. Perhaps their nutrition. Yeah. Um, they just weren't up for the event. Yeah. Other times it's deceiving. Uh, a, a, a physique that you don't think yeah. will make it they aren't just making it, they're, they're crushing, crushing it. it. Yeah. yeah, no, I agree with that. But I think there's a lot of people that just look at events like this, they sign up for them, and they, they just don't understand the size of the event that they're getting themselves into. Yeah. And if they do make it, they're so freaking dead, they don't know what even happened to them, and, and they just don't end up where they need to. So all I'm getting at with that is, is be prepared if you're going to do an event like this. Don't just go into it thinking, 
oh, there's neutral zones, there's this, that, the other, I can make this kind of race. You just can't. Don't go into this event thinking you're just going to um, hobble into the finish. Go into it thinking, I am going to ride strong all the way into the finish. Yeah. Uh, every year, I, my group is one of the first groups to finish. I usually stay in Star Valley, so we're driving down Snake River Canyon right. on the way down. And on the way down, we're seeing dozens, hundreds even, of cyclists coming up the canyon and a lot of them are really struggling. They're yeah. not drafting with each other, so right. they're missing out on this huge amount of efficiency that right. they can gain. They're, they're, they don't seem to be helping each other at all. Yeah. They're barely turning over the pedals. It really just comes down to lack of preparation, right. whether it's group riding experience yeah. or enough training to handle the latter part of the race. Exactly. All right, well, stay tuned. We'll have more information on that. Hopefully, uh, Cameron always puts out some really cool emails. If you haven't mm -hmm. joined his things, where can they get their emails on loaded just stuff? Uh, 902sports.com. Great. Put in your email address and yep. for, join the newsletter. Great. On our blog, I've yep. got a ton of really cool posts specific yep. about Lodija, uh, nutrition, training, preparation, you name it, it's there. Awesome. I've got a lot of great stuff. Good. And last thing is, if you're not taking uh, Cameron's supplement, Endurance 360, uh, go get that, try it out, try it before Lodija. It won't hurt you during by no means, but get, get your body built up, try it out. You'll really enjoy it. Most of all, keep cycling strong. Subscribe to the channel if you haven't. Make comments below. And uh, thanks for all you're doing. Talk to you soon.